my darling Mabel Girl, you know I love you Yes, my darling Mabel Girl, you know I love you Every spring begins with a hope that maybe, just maybe, this will be the year when I can harvest more than a handful of May apples. The season starts out in April with so much promise. That's when the young plants emerge, teasing me with the possibility of finding some delectable fruits in the future. But I must be patient and wait and wait until late summer when the edible fruits finally mature. And even then, there's no guarantee that I'll be able to get any because eyes other than mine are watching these plants too. Squirrels, chipmunks, and other scavengers love the fruits as much as I do. I have no idea why this plant is called May apple because the fruit doesn't resemble an apple, nor does it ripen in May. Don't let its name mislead you. In May, only the flower appears, and there's no sign of any fruit. This perennial member of the barberry family is native to Canada, the eastern United States, and parts of the Midwest. It grows in dense colonies and shaded woods and prefers rich, moist soil and dappled sunlight. Underground horizontal rhizomes enable it to carpet large areas and to send up new shoots year after year. Mayapple is a plant that could have stepped out of the fairy tales of Victorian England. One look at its large umbrella-shaped leaves and it's easy to imagine shy sprites and elves resting under their green canopy. These glossy leaves are multi-lobed and have a smooth stem. They can reach heights of two feet and grow singly or in twos. Plants with two leaves to a stem are the only ones that produce a flower and fruit. Those with single leaves do not. Young leaves are easy to locate because they're so distinctive. Make note of where they are because later on in the season, ripe fruits are usually hidden under them. Sometime in May, a single waxy white flower develops where the stem forks. It has six petals, bright yellow stamens, and is about two inches wide. You may have a hard time finding it since it hides under the leaves. I don't understand why some people describe its scent as disagreeable, because I find it pleasant and refreshing. After the flower is pollinated, a single oval fruit develops. At first, fruits are green, but eventually they turn yellow. In size and shape, they resemble a small lemon. These ripen in mid-August here in Massachusetts. At that time, many of the plants look like they're dying. The leaves start to wilt and droop down. This is actually a sign that the fruits are ready to harvest. Most of them drop to the ground. Those left on the plant can be gently prodded to fall off into your hand. These fruits have a sweet smell. They're soft to the touch and have an almost translucent yellow pulp. Warning, ripe fruits are the only part of this plant that's safe to eat. The leaves, flowers, green fruits, and roots are toxic. Never eat the immature green fruits. The local wildlife cherish these fruits and watch for just the right moment to grab them. I consider myself lucky if I can find even one. I cover the plants with cheesecloth to stop these invaders, but they're so determined that I'm often left with just an empty stem. That's why I won't be sharing any elaborate recipes here, because I can never get enough to make anything. If and when I finally find a ripe fruit, I immediately eat it. The outer skin is tough, so I discard it after scraping out the gelatinous and sweet inside portion. It tastes like a blend of several tropical fruits. Seeds are difficult to separate from the pulp, so spit them out. 
I don't have the luxury of overindulging in these fruits, since I never find enough to splurge on. But I've heard that some people have intestinal distress from eating too many. You may wonder why I bother with this fruit if it's so elusive. Well, the fact that it's difficult to obtain makes it even more desirable. Kind of like the plant world's version of playing hard to get. But the main reason is that my search gets me outdoors to appreciate the beauty of this singular plant. It's intriguing in every stage of its growth. And I feel privileged to be able to observe its progress, even if I can't obtain any fruit. However, if you're fortunate enough to find a patch of these plants and can somehow protect the fruits from being eaten by hungry critters, appreciate your good luck and go for it. Well, cause everybody knows Everybody knows Everybody knows I'm going home with sweet maple tonight